you can probably guess what this one is. What you're doing is you're gonna give the trainee as much liquid to drink as they possibly can, basically, within reason. So the more liquid that's consumed, the more they will urinate, right? We all know that. The more you drink, the more you pee. That leads to more opportunities to learn. Um, having the trainee urinate as many times as possible during the intensive training phase helps them learn more quickly, right? Drinking lots of liquid also can encourage poop to happen. That's an important point too, like um, making sure that a person's uh, drinking enough is one of the first things a doctor will recommend if they're having constipation or anything. So it also makes poop happen, which we want too in this procedure. So yeah, if you think of the, the increased fluids thing, is it's really about increasing learning opportunities and putting them close together in time. So my best sort of example from my own life of this is learning to parallel park. So if you only parallel parked when you needed to, so when you saw you know, the only spot available is a parallel parking spot, I gotta get into it, here I go, you wouldn't be very good at it, right? Because you don't need to do it maybe that often. Um, it's something that would take you a really long time to master. But when I was a 16 year old learning to drive, I took a really intense driver training course and my instructor made me parallel park, I wanna say 100 times in a row, and as a 16 year old, I really hated it and I really didn't want to do it. Um, but I can really parallel park now, I will say that. So the fact that I, I did it so many times close together made me master it really quickly. If I only did it once a driving lesson maybe, so that they were something like once a week for like 12 weeks, I probably wouldn't have been that good at the end. So. While it was annoying at the time, I got really good at it and I'm still good at it. So sometimes when we're trying to teach a new hard behavior, the opportunities to do it have to occur really, really, really frequently and all in a row in order for that to be um, something that is learned quickly and well. I hope that makes sense. So it's, um, yeah, we're trying to just, if, if, you're, if you're not having the trainee pee a lot in a row, you're just gonna stretch out how long it takes them to learn. I wanna say, you know, if all the components are in place here, you have a great reinforcer, again, that's our most important thing. Um, the, you're following sort of a schedule, so they're, they're on the toilet when they're likely to need to pee. Everybody that I've ever worked with on toilet training, there's some critical number of times they need to pee in the toilet and then get the reinforcer before they, they just get it. And that number is different for everybody. There, there's no like, once they've done it 50 times, they've got it. Some trainees that I work with, it's 100. Some trainees that I work with, it's two. I, and I can't predict what the number is um, for your trainee and your situation, but giving the increased fluids makes that no, us approach that number more quickly, right? So this is about, this is where the rapid in rapid toilet training comes from, increased fluids. So really, really important piece. Um, here's a couple, for, for each of these components, I'm gonna give you some do's and don'ts um, of how to implement them. So for increased fluids, you must have a variety of liquids available. So sometimes um, I work with trainees who, you know, we'll, we'll be talking, I go and meet the family and we talk about, okay, what liquids are we gonna use? What do they really like? And they'll go, oh, every Saturday after soccer, we go to McDonald's and he gets a little orange juice and he sucks it back so fast, it's perfect, we're gonna use orange juice. But then I'll say, okay, have you ever given him another orange juice? And they go, no. And I go, we should see what happens if we do that. Because with a lot of trainees, we actually find they get a, a satiation happening if they've had that one cup and they'll maybe have a half of the next one. They go, I'm good. So while it looks like it's something that they really, really love and we're sure orange juice will work, we don't know if they're gonna have enough for this to work really, really well for them. So variety of liquids is key. Um, you don't know if you, cause, I mean, it's not something that we parents often do is try to just give our kid it's a ton of juice, right? It's not something that a lot of trainees have experienced before they've started toilet training. So we need to know for sure, yes, this is gonna work really well. So the best way I usually find to do that is have a variety of choices for liquids available. Um, so, if they like orange juice, let's also have some peach juice and let's have some orange mango blend and let's have also water. Once a, once the learners had a couple cups of juice, they usually will want water. Um, yeah, just have a variety of liquids available. That's something that can help ensure they'll, they'll be motivated to continue drinking throughout the day. Um, it's hard to tell you exactly how much 
that this, your particular trainee should drink. The, the gist of it is we just want them to drink a lot more than they normally do because that's going to make them pee a lot more than they normally do. Some trainees that we work with are little drinkers and some are big drinkers. So if you have someone who's not a big drinker, they're a little drinker, they don't drink often, I, my general guideline would be about triple their usual amount. So if they normally finish one water bottle full between breakfast and the end of lunch, try for, you know, three to four. So you're, you're really upping it, right? Big drinkers, a good guideline is just making sure they get about 100 milliliters every 30 minutes. So that's about half a typical kid size cup every 30 minutes. It's really okay if they're just sipping. They don't have to chug. A lot of trainees that we work with like to sip. Totally fine. Just monitor how much they're having. Um, this is one of those things where, yeah, you, you must monitor it. You have to mark down how much they've had because it's really easy to lose track of this. Like you think, I just gave him another juice box. Um, he, he just finished one and then you kind of realize, no, that was an hour ago. Like you get in a weird time warp doing toilet training. You really need to track. <laughs> Pat's nodding. She knows. Like you need to track this or you will, you'll lose it. Like I, I promise I, I still need to track this and I've done this probably, you know, hundreds of times, maybe a thousand. I need to track it or you're, you're going to forget. You're going to lose track. Um, I'll show you in a second a way to track it. And another thing is to provide some salty snacks, like I mentioned, that'll increase their desire to drink. So we do work with some trainees too, where what they kind of like to do is finish a big bowl of their, their salty snacks and then they will down a whole water bottle. That's great. So if you kind of know, okay, that's what my kid typically does, just pile up the salty snacks, provide the water bottle. It doesn't have to be little sips. Whatever gets liquid into them is great. Go for it. Um, and a final do is making sure you offer them their most favorite drinking vessel and temperature. So if you know that this trainee loves really ice cold water, you have to make really ice cold water happen. So that might mean having a cooler of ice and a scoop in the bathroom so you can keep giving them ice cold water. You can't let them slow down or one of your pillars of rapid toilet training has fallen away and it all crumbles. They have to keep drinking. It's really, really key. Um, so yeah, some, some, um, some trainees will like, you know, like a fast food, big cup or like a 7-Eleven big cup with um, a straw. It's like a big gulp or whatever. And that's what they drink really well of. Fine. Let them drink out of that. Keep refilling it with, you know, pop from the fridge or whatever. But you, you need to give it to them in the format they love. Um, the format that helps them drink the best. If it's a straw, it's a straw. If it's an open cup, it's a cup. Um, some kids love squiggly, crazy straws or those straws that the liquid goes around glasses that are made out of a straw. Whatever gets them to drink, do it. I think I've made my point. They must drink. Um, this is the keeping track. So you don't necessarily have to pull up the PDF now, but I just want to draw your attention to this. Um, you have that PDF file of um, the rapid toilet training data sheets. This is at the bottom of every sheet. It's telling you to record the time whenever the trainee finishes about 100 milliliters of liquid. So this example here, this person's on a pretty good track. 735, 751, 810, this, this person's chugging along and drinking lots of liquid. Um, if you don't track, you will lose track and the person won't drink enough. Um, yeah, it's a really key part. So some don'ts. Um, don't stop giving liquids if you run out of their favorite or if they don't seem to like what you have. Um, you, you've got to have options for this. Get your assistant to make a store run and just get a bunch more things to try or, or pause and pick it up again tomorrow when you have more liquids to try. Um, if you find you get started on rapid toilet training and this is just not possible, you can't do rapid toilet training. So you have to do the long way. So pause there, come back tomorrow um, and start the long way. But I think, yeah, I, I mean, I want to say don't force them to drink. It's really critical that they have enough liquid, but if it's becoming a big struggle and you're, you're never going to force liquid down their throat, right? Um, you just need to constantly offer it. So don't take that as a no if the trainee isn't reaching for the cup that's next to them on the, the next to the toilet or whatever in the bathroom. Um, you can keep offering it to them, keep putting it to their lips. Some trainees that we work with, we find 
if they're, you know, watching a video while they're sitting on the toilet and they're really engrossed in it, we can kind of slip the straw up to their lips and they'll drink a lot because they're kind of focused. And so just keep trying to offer it in different ways um, to make sure that it happens. Um, I should say too about the the vessel thing, the drinking vessel. So I said some kids love like a fast food cup or whatever, or lots of ice or however it is. If you've been thinking, for example, you have a trainee who's still on like a sippy cup or a bottle, like a baby bottle, and they're a few years on and they probably shouldn't be using that anymore, don't think, I'm gonna tackle both at once. I'm gonna work on toilet training and I'm gonna wean them off the bottle and get them into a more age appropriate cup. Not right now, because all we want them to do in, for, for this procedure to work well is drink a ton. So don't take the thing they love to drink out of away, right? You need to let them have that because ingesting liquid is key to this procedure. And that's something you could revisit later on. Um, or if it's a higher priority for you than toilet training, work on that first. But don't work on them both together. Um, it's, it's too much. What drinks would you offer the trainee that you have in mind? Mmm, diluted juice if needed. Yeah, so you might try water first for sure. I mean, water's ideal. Mango juice, yum. Soup totally works. That's a really great idea um, if you have somebody who likes brothy sort of soup. Milk, sparkling water, awesome. Prune juice, hey, you're working on poop too. That's wonderful. Getting some fiber in. Apple juice is really popular. Coke. Yeah, I mean, if they if they love pop and it's something they'll drink a lot of, I would I would encourage you to just for now. It's it's short term. Yeah, let let them have it, right? Like you for this procedure to work well, they have to have a ton of liquid. Awesome. Apple juice is very popular. Yeah. That's great. Milk is a great one, but if milk is the only thing they really like to drink, I would encourage you to um, maybe don't do rapid toilet training or work on making sure they can do some other things as well. Because having a ton of milk is not good for your body, right? It can lead to weird, um, weird digestive effects that could get in the way of toilet training. Um, so yeah, crazy amounts of milk aren't great. Popsicles are awesome. I'm glad somebody wrote that. Um, popsicles are liquid, right? It's just frozen liquid, so that can be a really great way to hydrate. Pediasure, if they like that. Cranberry juice, these are great. Jello, Jello that's awesome. I didn't see that one. Jello, 